the violin is to me the most beautiful of all the instruments. I may be prejudiced. Joe Gingold, in his whole life, the way the way he approached music was always a um, role model, really, for for the younger musician to emulate. I wish there were more like him. I considered him always, and still do, as the greatest violin teacher that I ever met, and a musician, and an artist, the like of which I seldom, if ever, met. I have played the instrument since I'm three years old. That three-year-old boy was born in Russia in 1909, and it was his father who gave him that first violin. Gingold smashed the instrument, looking for the little man inside whom his father had told him played the music. After the German invasion of Russian border towns in World War I, the Gingold family was forced to spend months in refugee camps. One night, German soldiers took Joseph from his terrified mother. They insisted he play at a party they were giving. He was later returned to his mother, along with the payment of several bags of food. In 1920, the Gingolds emigrated to the United States with 11-year-old Joseph. Once in New York, Joseph continued his violin instruction under Melzar Chaffee. Chaffee recognized Gingold's talent and recommended him to Vladimir Grafman. It is Grafman who is credited with introducing Gingold to Yasha Heifetz and with helping him to study in Belgium with Eugène Isaïe. It was in Brussels, Belgium, that Gingold gave his first public performance. Returning to the United States during the Great Depression of the 1930s, Gingold took on various musical jobs, including long stints in Broadway orchestras. Mr. Gingold was a member of the NBC Symphony Orchestra under Arturo Toscanini from 1937 to 1943, and was subsequently concertmaster of the Detroit and Cleveland orchestras. He served in the latter position under the baton of George Zell for 13 years. Gingold cited Zell as being the greatest influence on him as a musician and a teacher. One. Ah. You know, to create love of music, to create a love of the violin is everything in the world to me. That's what I've, I cherish more than anything. Like a singer, like Pavarotti, <laughs> come on. Gingold confessed to biographer David Bloom that it's a blessed service to be a teacher. It was during his years with the Cleveland Orchestra that Gingold's reputation as a teacher grew. He taught at Case Western Reserve University and the Cleveland Music School Settlement and served as the head of chamber music under Ivan Galamian at Meadowmount. He counted 13-year-old Itzhak Perlman, 14-year-old Pincus Zuckerman, and 12-year-old Jamie Laredo among his students. This was all done before I came to Indiana University to teach. When you have a background of this sort, I think you are ready to impart some of your knowledge to others. But he didn't take up teaching full-time until he left Cleveland in 1960 to join the faculty of the Indiana University School of Music at Bloomington. Well, when I first awaken in the morning, I uh, usually prepare my coffee, read the newspaper, and then uh, relax in my favorite Archie Bunker chair. And then I uh, make it a practice to take my violin out and what I call go for a promenade on the fingerboard. Uh, it may only be a half hour, but I believe in uh, doing this before I go to school and start my first lesson.
teaching fulfills my need to express myself, my need for a beautiful life, and my need to contribute something. While many of his students, like Joshua Bell, gained international reputations, he was noted less for the creation of virtuosos than for the broader values of musicianship he instilled in master classes and the close guidance he gave to chamber and orchestral musicians. I mean, it was always a very, very pleasant relationship and always very informal. He would always uh, uh, play a little bit before, you know, he would say, oh, kids, you know, today I'm so much out of shape, it's so terrible, you know, and he would start playing something absolutely fabulously, you know, and we would all laugh, you know, there he goes again being out of shape and playing great. We have always needed Joe Gingolds for the continuation of appreciation of what is possible in music. And we can only hope that he has found a way to bring to us other Joe Gingolds in the future. At the time of his death in 1995, Alex Ross wrote in Joseph Gingold's obituary for the New York Times, Gingold is remembered as a vibrant man who played a paternal role in his students' lives. Most important, as a performer and a teacher, he formed one of the last living links to the elegant, masterly 19th century school of violin playing. Tonight we remember with reverence the life of Joseph Gingold and celebrate his life's accomplishments and how they will resonate with the lives of musicians and audiences for generations to come. You don't play that yet? You wear? <laughs>